Welcome to Isamizu Global Conscious Awareness, leaders around the world. I'm Dr. Isabel. I'm Dr. Jun. To achieve the best version of yourself, uncover your cell stories and discover your quantum nature. Together, we can shift consciousness awareness towards proactive health and well-being. And we are here with an amazing special guest, mm -hmm. Sakura. Sakura is going to introduce herself. Mm -hmm. She is a master esthetician. She is a Reiki master mm -hmm. and a hypnotherapist. And a welcome. radio host. And radio <laughs> host. <laughs> she is a radio host. And welcome. Thank you. Thank you. Yes. So we want to hear a little bit from Sakura about her story. She has an amazing story of transformation. And one of the things that we talk about is how we can achieve our the best version of ourselves and how we can uncover the story of ourselves that Dr. Jun mentioned and how we can become that, find that quantum nature that we all have. We need to discover that quantum nature. So she's going to talk a little bit about her story and how she yeah. achieved that transformation. Yes. So I do believe that our whole life is that journey, right, of self-exploration um, and re revealing and unveiling ourselves to ourselves. Mm -hmm. But there's always a bridge, and sometimes there's more than one bridge in that process. Mm -hmm. um, for me, it was an illness and a rare autoimmune disorder, which is called pemphigus vulgaris, and it's a blistering disease. Um, now, at the time when I actually started having symptoms, I had no idea what was going on. Um, because it is so rare, it is not something you hear about. And I've been in skincare for 18 plus years, and I had never heard of it. So um, it, it just started that way where I was having these blisters show up, and I ended up having to go see a dentist first. Oh. Because um, it started well, because manifesting in my mouth. In my mouth. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and so I went to the dentist and he was just baffled. Um, he immediately said it was viral. It had to be mm -hmm. viral. And I was like, like herpes? Mm -hmm. <laughs> you know? right. So it was a little unnerving. Um, and then I ended up seeing my primary care physician. And then I ended up seeing three more primary care physicians. And nobody could give me a straight answer. Mm -hmm. I was going under, you know, all of this blood work and different labs mm -hmm. and tests to discover what it was and still nobody could figure it out. Mm -hmm. So just like anyone would, you go on the internet mm -hmm. and I ended up on WebMD for hours and I ended up finding it. And it's one of those things where, you know, what you're seeking you're going to find eventually, yes. right? Mm -hmm. So it popped forward and, um, you know, when you read things on the internet too, especially diseases, they're a lot more alarming and they're, you know, they're very bad. Mm -hmm. um, but I didn't look at all of that. I just, you know, in my mind, because I'm such a positive person anyways, I just kind of ruled that out. Mm -hmm. um, so I was pretty optimistic with it, but I still needed to know that I had that. And even though this is such a rare and life-threatening illness, it's mm -hmm. a five to 15% mortality rate. Oh, wow. Yeah, um, I ended up seeing a dermatologist. That's who you see. Mm -hmm. So I went to a dermatologist that I used to be employed by and he, agreed with me, but he still did the biopsy anyways mm -hmm. to rule it out. Yeah. And sure enough, on Christmas Day in 2015, wow. I was diagnosed Five with pemphigus oh. vulgaris. Um, and it was very, you know, very scary. But at the same time, I was so excited to have a diagnosis that I can now start to dive into the treatment. Mm -hmm. um, now, because I'm such a holistic person and my background's always been that way, mm -hmm. I, as much as I was starting into the medicine, and, and the first round of treatment is niacinamide and antibiotics, mm -hmm. so I started that. Um, but at the same time, I was like, no, what are some other avenues I can take? So I did homeopathy, mm -hmm. I did naturopathy, I did Chinese herbs and acupuncture, um, Ayurvedic medicine. I was doing everything all at once and all at the wow. same time. And, and still, like, and I was giving, you know, each one a little bit of time mm -hmm. to see if it would work, yeah. but nothing, nothing was working. And then it started to get worse. Okay. Now, so how long was it that while well, you find out about the diagnosis, how long was that? And I believe you were having a lot of pain. Well, know. yeah, I mean, in the mouth, it was difficult and most mm -hmm. challenging because they were also in my esophagus. Oh, wow. So eating food and swallowing food was, you know, it was, it was a hard process. A lot of my foods had to be soft. Um, but actually, it was pretty manageable. I was just getting 
one or two fluid filled blisters on my skin because it started to move from my mouth and now I was getting them on my skin, um, but they would go away. So it wasn't that big of a deal yet. Mm -hmm. um, it actually didn't flare and that's what they call it as a flare, just like in with rosacea and you know eczema, you have these flares. And so I had this flare in 2017 and it was right after a breakup. So I had a lot of stuff going on in my life and it was, a, it was a long, yeah, and emotional. It was a long um, relationship of nine years. Oh, and wow. yeah, and so th I was going through that and um, so I started to have a flare and what that is is multiple blisters popping up and all of them all over the place. So I was getting blisters in my hair, mm. in my eyes, in my ears, in my nose, still in the mouth, and then everywhere, even in your private area. Mm. So even going to the bathroom oh. started to become more challenging. So all of mm -hmm. my day-to-day -day normal things that you do, like I was, you know, that you can take that for granted, which I realize now. Mm -hmm. um, so I was still trying to n be normal though. I was still, going to work and you know doing facials and hypnosis on people i was still trying to make other people feel better even though i was You're just I, I was dying you know yeah. and so i was trying to go to yoga and i was in in order to wear clothing i had to put these adhesive pads mm -hmm. on me underneath my clothing mm -hmm. and the other thing was trying to figure out what sorts of skin products to use and mm -hmm. I, I mean I have a wide knowledge of skincare products and still even those you know were not working mm -hmm. and so um, I knew that it was more than just an external issue mm -hmm. is what I'm getting at yes. so um, I ended up having to actually move in with my family because it just I couldn't do it anymore do yeah mm -hmm. so at that point, and that was in the early spring of 2017, mm -hmm. um, and it's been two years of suffering, yeah, and not really having a solution. Yeah, that. exactly. Not having anything worse, and then you know, doing mind over matter because I'm a very optimistic person, mm -hmm. and I always see the glass is half full. But that wasn't enough, mm -hmm. and I was like, well, I meditate, I do the work. Mm -hmm. Why is this happening to me? I, I was in that place of being a victim at that time mm -hmm. too, right? Mm -hmm. Which it just makes you feel more yeah. worse, sorry, yeah. and yeah. you, you want to bring on more pity for yourself. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. But at the same time, a lot of people didn't know what was going on, mm -hmm. you know, because I hid it so well. I mean, I was getting them on my face and I was caking my face with makeup. I mean, I, you know, we're women. We can figure out ways yes. around things. Mm -hmm. So it, it was very challenging. And then finally it was, I couldn't hide it anymore. And I couldn't block it out anymore. It became bigger than me. And that's when I had to step into it. And it wasn't just now I had to bring in, you know, bigger guns as far in medicine, because I ended up having to see a specialist at University of Washington who's a professor and he specializes in pemphigus vulgaris. So my dermatologist referred me to him because he just was like, I can't, this is out of my scope. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I can't do this anymore. So and I was in with his care, under his care, um, which was quite also interesting because there's all these interns, right? So I'd walk oh, into a room, you. yeah, and I'd have no like students. eight, no 10 <laughs> students like looking at me. I mean, I was a perfect subject though. Mm -hmm. Like if they were gonna learn about Pemphigus vulgaris, I was the person they should learn yes, it from. Yes, Absolutely. So, I mean, I was worst case scenario. Mm -hmm. I was like, she could die. Mm -hmm. I mean, and that's where I was at. So I had, what ended up happening is the blisters started to become huge oh, open serious. lesions. Mm. So my skin was entirely ripped open. I looked like a burn victim. Mm -hmm. And in fact, that's how they treat pemphigus in the hospital as is you, yeah, mm -hmm. you are treated as a burn victim. You are, you enter into the burn unit. Um, mm -hmm. But the problem is, is that's also where most people die because think about it. Exactly. Where are you most susceptible yeah. to infection is a hospital. And so, the wound is open, so uh -huh. anything can go deep into the body. Exactly. Exactly. So I was, I had wounds all over my body. I was pumped full of steroids. So I was bloated. I could barely walk. I, you know, I was having to wear uh, compression stockings on my legs. Um, there were days where I'd stood all day because my butt actually, embarrassingly enough, was the worst area. It was dark, dark purple. Oh. And so I couldn't even put pressure on my body. Mm -hmm. And a lot of pressure would also tear. My skin was so thin, I, I was tearing open. 
And so I was taking bleach baths twice a day. That's where I found mm -hmm. relief. Well, I didn't find relief in the bleach, yeah. but that was ordered by right. the doctor. Um, so me, I added essential oils, <laughs> you know, because I was like, Magic. all right, Magic. even if this, soul. yeah, <laughs> even if this is taking me out, I'm going to make it more luxurious. Mm -hmm. And, you know, and, and the doctor did make fun of me because mm -hmm. I, he called me his hippie patient because I talked about foods and, you know, how about changing my diet? What, what mm -hmm. would foods do? Oh, you could do that all you want. That's not going to make a difference. Now, I didn't fault him because that's, you know, that's outside of, yeah, I mean, that's Probably not what he strange. learned. Exactly. Mm -hmm. But I was still not going to let that discourage me. Mm -hmm. And I also wasn't going to let the whole thing of you will have this forever and there's no cure. Because that, to me, was like in one ear, out the other. Yes, perfect. Oh, yeah. yeah. That's how we need to take everything. We Absolutely. Need, we need to listen to your body mm -hmm. and mm -hmm. find options, find solutions in a holistic and natural way. Because mm -hmm. mm -hmm. then also, yeah, we need, and that's what we like to do. We want to integrate, so the Western and the Eastern medicine, the best of both worlds. Right. And you were doing all that. Yeah, and the other thing, I honestly, with that mm -hmm. too, I had to learn not to shame myself for also taking the medicine from mm -hmm. Western medicine right. mm -hmm. because that's another side of it, right? Yes. I mean, you, you feel bad like, oh, I'm a sucker. I'm succumbing to Western medicine. Well, really, mm -hmm. I had no other choice. Well, exactly. Yeah, because the, the, the placebo, the nocebo effect, right? Right. So the mind can alter the chemistry in, mm -hmm. in the body, how you believe, you know, the, what you're taking. Exactly. So why not? Accentuate, um, uh, amplify that effect. Right, yeah. right. And just, you know, and I had to basically relook at it as like, okay, this is going to help me. This is a positive yes. thing. And, I, and I'm, so I'm rewiring that in my brain mm. as I'm taking this medicine because I was actually approved for an experimental drug at the time, mm. which mm. they hadn't even explored for pemphigus. It was really f more for lymphoma. Mm. So I was treated in the cancer unit at the hospital and I would have to go in and do these infusions and they were you know eight to ten hours at a time wow. and if you reacted it was even longer right mm -hmm. but you were in there with other cancer patients and honestly I was the most miserable patient there like everyone mm -hmm. else seemed pretty happy but I was wheeled in in a wheelchair you know mm -hmm. and I, it hurt to get up on the table and I mean I I had bandages all I looked like a mummy because mm -hmm. I had to wear bandages under my clothing but that was the only time I had gotten out of the house, too, was mm -hmm. to go to the hospital. Mm -hmm. So the quarantining and, you know, everything that everyone has gone through right now mm -hmm. with COVID, with I've already COVID. done it. Yeah. And, and, and closing my business, I had to do that, too. Mm -hmm. But the difference was everyone else was still open. Mm -hmm. My competitors were still open. And I had to trust that I would be okay. Right. I had to trust that, you know, and, and that was... There's so many lessons that I learned, and I'm going to get into all of those, <laughs> but trust. I had to trust that, you know, this mm -hmm. was actually not happening to me. This was happening for me. Mm -hmm. And why was it that's happening amazing. for me? That's right? Amazing. And that's, that's how important. people need to react to everything that happens to them. Exactly. There is a lesson, and there is a reason mm -hmm. why mm -hmm. they're getting the symptoms or the disease that they're getting. Yeah. And you're not, you know, honestly, you're... Your body talks to you all the time, yes. all the time. It's not like I hadn't had other issues going on prior to this pemphigus. Mm -hmm. I was having vertigo for a long time, mm -hmm. years and years of vertigo. I was having um, gastrointestinal issues, which, you know, leaky gut, that's your second brain. Mm -hmm. yeah. I mean, I was constantly being talked to. Mm -hmm. And a lot of it actually, you know, they tell you to go back, like what was happening in your life when you were diagnosed, right? When you were mm -hmm. first diagnosed. Mm -hmm. And I did. And it was when I had actually decided to go back into the relationship oh. that I broke off mm -hmm. and then went back into it and then broke it off only to break it off again. Okay. So had I listened to myself that, and, and really it was self-worth mm -hmm. um, and autoimmune is self-hatred. Mm -hmm. And so I had a lot of that running, you know, mm -hmm. and it wasn't just my stuff. As I was doing the healing, so aside from getting the medicine and changing my mm -hmm. diet, I went vegan. I was already gluten free and soy free and dairy free and I'm like, why not? <laughs> like if you're gonna like maybe die, why wouldn't you try everything, mm -hmm. right? Yeah. And, it, and it's, it's not that expensive. And I, so I went vegan and um, I decided to bring in supplements also to address what I felt was an underlying virus. Cause I also was listening to functional medicine doctors from Perfect. around the world mm -hmm. who were saying, you know, if it's autoimmune, A, we don't understand it and B, 
your body doesn't attack itself for no reason. Mm -hmm. There is something there it's trying to get rid of, so what is it? Mm -hmm. So I started taking supplements to address EBV, which is a big one, right? Epstein-Barr mm -hmm. virus, and right. if anyone's ever had mono, you have EBV mm -hmm. somewhere in your body, yes. and it gets triggered. Mm -hmm. And it's not just triggered by your environment, right? Your physical environment, mm -hmm. it's triggered emotionally. Mm -hmm. yes. And so what is it, right? So I was doing all of that and, a colleague had offered and volunteered her services to me, so I was doing weekly hypnosis and theta healing. Oh, wow. Mm. And yeah, and with the theta healing, I don't know if you've yeah. ever had, mm -hmm. so I explored all of the epigenetic <laughs> healing that I needed to do, and it was a lot. It was so big and long, the list. It was like every ancestral member like in my family was like, yeah, put my name up there, and I have this issue, uh, and mm -hmm. she can handle it. Oh, and, no. you, and you think again, right? So you were leaving things that you done, your ancestors so had. Absolutely. So everything compressed yeah. into you. Mm -hmm. this week. Yeah, yeah, because you're uh, the strongest person, so, yeah, and I you're know. the most aware and awake mm -hmm. to handle it and want to deal with it. Not that I wanted to deal, I mean, I was not in that way right. anyway. But yeah, and it was actually mostly my Japanese side which was interesting. So I, and I could see the, a lot of their lives. I could see how they presented themselves. Mm -hmm. um, it was a lot of self-hatred, oh. especially with the women. It was mm -hmm. a lot of self-hatred. It was a lot of making themselves small. It was a lot mm -hmm. of physical, verbal abuse, um, all of that. Mm -hmm. And for me, it was also all of that, not just from myself, right? Mm -hmm. Because we're all really just awful to ourselves most yeah. of the time, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. But also every relationship I had ever had, the toxicity of every relation that, that was bad just had built up. up. Exactly. Mm -hmm. And it was like, what better way to talk to me than through my skin? Something I mm -hmm. see all the time that I do for a living. Like, what better way, right? So, so I really had to start diving in deep and addressing all of that. And the minute I was doing everything, the culmination of everything, mm -hmm. I started to shift. And of course the doctors, you know, they have to take all the credit. Yeah. <laughs> it was just the medication. That right. Yeah, there's just right. the working for you. Right? Yeah, and I mean, I think there's part of it where I, I get it. Doctors are relied on so much, you know, they're, they're that crutch. Mm -hmm. And you know, yeah, they were, they were a bit of a crutch for me, but I knew it, this is my body, mm -hmm. not their body. Exactly. If anyone's gonna know how to heal it, that's gonna be me. Mm -hmm. So, yes. you know, and I'm not a textbook, I'm not, black and white as mm -hmm. they saw like mm -hmm. things that would normally work mm -hmm. for someone else wouldn't work for me mm -hmm. so um yeah it was quite an intense journey in that a sense yeah. Yeah. yeah yeah it was just it it really mm -hmm. was um it it's i learned a lot and one of the things i did learn aside from trusting was that i had to surrender so the pain i didn't even talk about the pain was so unbearable mm -hmm. i mean i i thought i'm gonna meditate Mm -hmm. Like, I have all this time. I'm going to meditate and see why it's here. Oh, no. There was no, like, uh uh. My mind, mm -hmm. there was so, now yeah, there was no peace. There was mm -hmm. no peace. It hurt so bad. And so, I, I mean, I slept on ice packs oh. to sleep at night. I had to have ice packs put out by my family to numb, no. to numb me. Mm -hmm. oh. And if I sat during the day, I sat on ice packs because it numbed my body. So, and that's really how I got through it, you know? But, um, so it was a lot of work that you had to do to heal that emotional mm. trauma. Yes. Yes. So a lot of uh, like hypnotherapy that helped a lot, probably, mm. and then you just valuing yourself and just saying, "No, I'm worth it. I'm more than mm -hmm. what I was thinking." Right. And then surrendering. And surrendering. surrendering. Because yeah. there was no, I, there was no knowing if this is the way that I was going to leave mm -hmm. the planet or. Or, or not, yeah. but I had to trust that whatever was happening was happening for me, mm -hmm. not to me, mm -hmm. and that whenever it would be over would be the correct timing for it to be, it would be divine timing for yeah. it to be right. over, yeah. and that this was a lesson in mm -hmm. itself. Yeah. So if I could come on the other side of it, what is that lesson? And then now, what do I do with that, right? Because mm -hmm. that's such valuable information, right? Mm -hmm. it's, like, it's like finishing a puzzle and someone's starting a puzzle next to you that's the same puzzle, and you might want to give them pointers, right? Mm -hmm. Like you, I mean, or you can watch them struggle, but who wants to do that? I mean, you were given that information for a reason. Mm -hmm. And so now what are you going to do with it? How are you going to pay it forward? How are you going to give back, right? So, 
So have you noticed with your clients um, a relationship with their condition, their skin condition and their emotions? Is there like a similarity? Oh, mm -hmm. Absolutely. And that's the, the ironic part is that when this happened to me, I was already doing hypnosis. I brought in hypnotherapy to address skin issues. Mm -hmm. And I had an hypothesis in my head that, because in the 70s, they actually used it for acne. Mm -hmm. They knew it worked on acne. Mm -hmm. So I was like, well, if it worked on acne, how come it can't work on rosacea and eczema any and skin any issue. skin yes. issue? Mm -hmm. yes. And so I started using it in that way and I discovered, yes, everything is linked. It's all connected, right? I mean, your skin is your barrier, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. This is your, it's also your self-identity. It's mm -hmm. who you are, it's your authentic self. Yes. Mm -hmm. And so when there is something inside not going right or mm -hmm. there's the balance is off between who you are, who you wanna be and carrying yourself small, mm -hmm. I mean, that's gonna manifest on your oh, skin yeah. in some way. Yeah. So yeah, for sure. Um, like I said, acne is definitely rooted in shame. I, I find shame. that a lot. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So there's, yeah, there's plenty of issues that are related, but your skin is the last place, right? It's the last right. thing mm -hmm. to right. talk to you, yes. right? Chinese medicine, yes, homeopathy. You know, they yeah. talk about the last resort, so last place comes up the skin. Right. Yeah. 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 I mean, it's your calling from card. The inside. Right. Mm -hmm. out. So all the organs in the inside that are not mm -hmm. balanced, and all of a sudden, you're going to see the reflection right. on your skin. Right. And like a volcano, right? Like yeah. a year. <laughs> <laughs> that's true. For sure. Oh, that's yeah. amazing. And yeah. I'm so excited mm -hmm. that you are sharing your information and what you went through yeah. with a lot of people and a lot mm -hmm. of people that are struggling with the same conditions. It, it's really, helped. yeah, it's um, actually, it's really disheartening. I'm mm -hmm. on a lot of Facebook groups that support Pemphigus. Mm -hmm. um, people die <gasps> every day. Um, mm -hmm. it, it, it's yeah. really, it's, and it was just ca characterized as affecting older, elderly people, mm -hmm. but I've noticed a shift in that. Mm -hmm. And so I have noticed also there's been a rise in more autoimmune disorders, mm -hmm. as I'm sure you guys yes. have as well, which also tells me we have not eliminated the self-hatred, mm -hmm. right? right? We, we, we need to figure uh -huh. out more ways to deal with it. Yes. And yes. so, so I do you know, share information there. It's really important to give people hope. Mm -hmm. um, and a lot of people that reach out to me, re people reach out to me all the time, because um, I do reference it through my radio show. Mm -hmm. um, just, you know, it, it's important that they know it's more than just the medicine. Because yes. uh, that's all they know. Mm -hmm. is, is all the, every single post is, well, I took the medicine and I'm still this way. Mm -hmm. yes. It's more than that. That's you know, you ha unfortunately, you have to do work, too. Mm -hmm. And I know at that point, your body's so, you're tired. I get it. I've been there. I was exhausted to do work while mm -hmm. you're down. Yeah. Who wants to do that? That's true. Right. That's true. But that's really when you have to do it, yeah. right? That's when you get the courage mm -hmm. to do it. Right. That's why I think people like to reconnect really with your story because that's you know where people can relate to. Somebody you feel like an emotional, mental support. Yeah. Somebody went through that. Right. Tough stuff, right? Yeah, and yeah. they're alive and they're on the other side. Mm -hmm. And I've been in remission for you know I I've been in remission since May of 2019. Mm -hmm. um, and so, yeah. So no blisters. <laughs> no blisters. Forever, yeah. Right? <laughs> What's that? Yeah, yes. and, and you know, honestly, I people ask me, will it come back? And I say, no, no. it will not. Perfect. Mm -hmm. You know, and and of course, doctors will argue with me on that. But mm -hmm. you know, that's that's okay. It's not their body. It's not their like body. No right. Exactly. <laughs> yes. I, I mean, if you mm -hmm. don't really quite understand the disease, mm -hmm. how can and it's a disease. Yes. Exactly. Correct. I'm yes. not going into that disease ever again. Mm -hmm. And I do okay. do things to make sure I'm not. I don't go back there. And that's self care, right? Mm -hmm. But that self-care, self right? Mm -hmm. That's what yeah. self-care is. It's yeah. self-love, and in order to love yourself, you have to be authentically you. Because mm -hmm. if you're being someone else, that's then that's true. you know, that's how do you true. love yourself? Yeah. Shows, so. shows up true nature of you, right? Right. Who you are. Your true yeah. essence, yeah. absolutely. And that carries over now for me into relationships, right? Because that was the big culprit was mm -hmm. toxic relationships. I'm sorry with men, but you know, the, you you carry that. And so now what do you do with that? So how do I look at now when I engage in relationships? Mm -hmm. and, and I don't even have to worry about that anymore. It's, mm -hmm. it's, it's so healed in me that now I'm also not attracting it, right? Mm -hmm. That pattern, right? right? 
So that's you, the other thing to know. You change the pattern. You change right. the law. You rewire your different way, right? You right. Yeah. Epigenetics. Epigenetics. I did yes. my epigenetics. Yeah. 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 Your frequency is so different, right? <laughs> right. So you're going to attract the frequency that we had to that. Now. Right. Yeah. Exactly. And then also the other side of that, right, is people ask me, well, are you worried about your daughter getting it? No, I'm not actually because I healed it. Mm -hmm. She yeah, doesn't have to worry. You just cut that. Exactly. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah. Yeah. And so do, I mean, could she get something? Sure. That's her own journey, though. That's not for me to take on, mm -hmm. right? Yes. So that's the other part of it, too. So we're not a victim with the gene, right? Right. With the master. No, Isn't exactly. Yeah. Exactly. You can change your DNA through thought all the time. Mm -hmm. You know, Dr. Bruce Lipton has proved this. Yes. <laughs> yes. Plenty of other doctors have proved this, too. Yes. But mm -hmm. it's important to know how strong your thoughts are, mm -hmm. you know, and how they manifest. And mm -hmm. yes, you can manifest your thoughts, that, that toxicity can manifest manifest through an illness and through your skin. That's true. So. Mm -hmm. The radio show was born oh, out of um, mm -hmm. creating a platform or resource for people to go mm -hmm. who were suffering like me because I felt alone. Mm -hmm. I'm not going to lie. Yeah. I felt alone. I actually didn't even know of these Facebook pages while it, the odd thing was is I couldn't find any of that while mm. I was going through it, which tells me I needed to yes. go through it right. by myself. Just for you to show up so that people can exactly. connect with you. Yes. Exactly. Yeah. So anyways, um, what I was going to say though is the radio show, I, I created that because I wanted a, a place for people to go that were suffering, right. feeling alone, mm -hmm. not even just with the same autoimmune, just with any mental, emotional issue to know there's more out there than just your doctor. Yes. There's more resources available and there's mm -hmm. people willing to help you. And there's people that have been through awful stuff too and mm -hmm. want to share that with you mm -hmm. and help heal you as well so or heal you as you heal yourself mm -hmm. on your own journey. So could you tell yeah. us how you can connect to you know, with people? Oh, yeah. yeah. Um, so my website is sakurasutter.com or lovefromthehip.com. Um, my show is on Wednesdays on AM 1150 KKNW. Um, which you can go to 1150kknw.com, and that's from 2 to 3 p.m. Pacific Standard Time on Wednesdays. I'd love for you to listen in. I do have a lot of live shows where you can call in and get free personal information for yourself. Um, yeah, and then sakuraskinandmind.com if you want a facial <laughs> or yeah. hypnotherapy or Reiki, um, and as well as mediumship. So there's plenty of Plenty of fun stuff there. Right. <laughs> we post that contact information, so, uh, you know, link later. Yeah. Yes. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you, so thank you for so having much. me. Yeah. I really <laughs> appreciate it.